Hey friends, so Blade just came out with the, uh, or just released the graphic user interface, or the GUI, uh, for the Blade 350QX3. Um, they've also just released the firmware the for the, the QX3 um, on their website, bladehelis.com. Um, so you can go on now and you can get the firmware for the QX3. Um, and you can update your old 350QX models. Uh, now this will work all the way back to the very first version um, because the hardware hasn't changed at all. It's all, uh, you know, it's all been in the firmware and the software. Uh, the only hardware change from the QX, the QX2, and the QX3, the only difference between the three is on the QX3, you now have an antenna mast up here. Um, and they've moved the GPS unit on the QX2 over to the uh, number three boom. Um, that's really the only difference. And I believe on the QX3, there's also a, a satellite receiver down in here. Um, so I'm going to real quick run you guys through what it takes to update your firmware on your QX. Now, I actually have, this is a, uh, this is the original QX. Um, so what originally came with smart mode, stability mode, and agility mode um, before the AP combo came out. So what I've got is what, and what you're going to need is this is the uh, 350QX USB multi-rotor programmer cable. Um, and this is part number BLH7840. And as you can see, let me get here closer. It's just a USB, and it's got three wires, and it plugs into the 350QX uh, on the right by uh, boom number three for motor three. Um, so we take that, and now you will need to download an FTDI uh, driver for this. The Blade 350QX GUI has a driver that you can download for it um, because I run Windows XP. So you have to get the driver. Okay, so anyway, we're going to plug that in. And real quick, let's see if you all can see this here. Damn it. Okay. So... And I'm using, I'm actually using the uh, blade, the original blade multi-rotor update utility, um, which came out when the AP combo came out, and you can update your software to the version two. So we've got COM7, which on mine is the only one selected because I unplugged all my other USB devices. And we're going to choose file, and now I have this pulled up. See, now I actually have the version 2 firmware already in here. So if something happens with the version 3, the QX3 release here, um, I can actually go ahead and backdate my firmware, which is what I was wanting to try and do originally, uh, but they never released the version 1 firmware because they're a bunch of dicks. So we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to update the... Uh, to the 350QX3 release... And we're going to go down here, and we're going to have wait for device and upload firmware. Now, at the moment, the the quad is off. Um, it's plugged in, but it's not powered up. So we're going to go ahead and hit that. Now we get the waiting screen. Now we're going to come down here, and we're going to power the quad up. And immediately, now you get that progress bar. Okay, device was upgraded successfully. Please disconnect and reset the device. We're going to exit out of that. And we're going to shut the...
the quad off. Now that we've upgraded, oops, now that we've upgraded the firmware, my legs out of that. Now we can get into the 350QX user interface. And let me real quick here. Hey, how you doing? Let me get my camera stand all situated. Let's see if you can see that. You can see that? Yep, you can see that. Okay. Let me get that up here. Okay, so currently we've got down in the corner here, the bottom left corner, disconnected, try and COM port 7. Okay, and that is the correct COM port. Now for all of you that need to find the new firmware, this home page, if you're, when you're not connected, scroll down. Item number six right here. If your firmware is older than November 1st, 2014, you need to, and here's a hyperlink, download new firmware right there. You can do it right there. And install it here. And you click that link to install the new firmware. So it's right there. You want to download the new firmware? Right there. Okay. A lot of guys were a little bit confused as to where. But it's right here. Okay. So we've got the GUI up. Now we're going to go ahead and power the quad up. And immediately it connects. Okay, and it, it immediately pops up to the sensor information tab. Now it's got, okay, it's got the orientation sensor and the IMU. It's the pressure sensor, which is your barometer, um, which is your for your altimeter. Compass, GPS, and your speed controller. So this goes through and checks all of them real quick. Shows your battery voltage your accelerometer, your gyroscope, your orientation. So if I, theoretically, if I pitch back, can you see that? Can you see this visual representation of the 350 pitch back? And same with the yaw and roll. Okay. So this is your compass value down here. This is the information that's being sent out from the compass. And your pressure sensor, the barometer, and it tells you the, the temperature. Okay, so it's uh, 27.45, 47, 48. It's rising because I've got heat near it. Uh, degrees in Celsius and the height estimated. And it's uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Well, it's going up because, of course, my temperature is going up. So this is one thing, if you guys are going out flying, you can see right here that this is affecting, the temperature right here is affecting your height. So if you're going out flying and it's, you know, say it's a, uh, say it's a 20 degree Celsius day outside and you take it from your car and you, you immediately power it up and you don't let this adjust to the ambient temperature, uh, your height value is going to be all out of whack. Yeah. Okay, so let's go down to the next screen, which is calibration. <coughs> and uh, there's a couple, there's two actually right here that uh, you can do with the GUI hooked up. Uh, so the first one is the calibrate the accelerometer. We're going to go ahead and click calibrate. So it's beeping. Calibration successfully completed. Now it resets. Reconnects. Goes back through. And now you can see here my accelerometer. Everything is pretty much is zeroed out. So we'll go back to the calibration. Uh, calibrate camera gimbal. And this is the Seago... 2 GB only okay so that's fine that's the 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 dome looking one here that's that is that the 3-axis gimbal so I've only got the Seago 200 so there's no calibration for that guy um, and then it's calibrated spectrum DX4 transmitter and it gives you the instructions here and I'm assuming that is going to give you uh, what does that say Cannot open gimbal calibration PDF. I don't know. Um, hopefully that's going to give you the ability to access um, stability mode. 
with the um, DX4, or which is actually it's a DX5, but uh, for some reason they call it a DX4. There's five channels on it. Um, and then Calibrate Compass, okay, and this gives you the online instructions. It also gives you video instructions, which links to a YouTube, uh, which is probably the Steve Petrato version, uh, telling you exactly how to calibrate your compass. Um, and then this gives you some compass warning may be triggered by replacing compass sensor, bringing it next to metal or magnetic object, blah, blah, blah. Metal, and metal will screw it up. Now the last one down here, uh, your flight boundaries. This is kind of cool because uh, this gives you maximum distances that this thing will go. So this is supposed to um, help prevent flyaways. So okay, so geofence, this is how far uh, diameter or radius around you. So I've got mine set to 300 meters. Uh, and the height limit, I've got mine set to 121 meters because 400 feet is 121.9 meters. Um, so I want to make sure I'm going to stay under that. So we've got 121 meters set. And this is the maximum height from home point in AP and smart mode. So we'll have to check that out. Okay, so the next tab down here shows you your uh, satellites your GPS information, um, which is cool because it, I mean, it shows you the available satellites in your area. Um, you know, this might change if you're, you know, from your home to your uh, flying field, um, but it gives you your latitude and your longitude and your altitude in meters and your accuracy down to a meter. So right now my accuracy is at 1.4 meters um, and it gives you a velocity in meters per second which I'm zero um, and I guess you can go and view that on a map <coughs> excuse me and then the device information and so it gives you your uh, your firmware version um, your vehicle type and I supposedly this will work with the 200 QX as well um, and the serial number of your QX. And that's it. Um, that is the that's the overview of the, the user interface for the the uh, Blade 350 QX firmware version 3. Uh, since I don't have the QX3, we're just calling it the firmware version 3. Um, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to test it tomorrow, tomorrow being Saturday. Um, go out and take it out for a little flight. Um, hopefully I will be able to figure out how to access um, stability mode because I don't ever fly in smart mode. Uh, I really only ever fly in, in AP or stability mode. Um, and the only time I fly in AP mode is when I actually have um, a, the gimbal on it. Uh, every other time, like I've got presently, I don't have the gimbal. I do ever, however, have my FPV set up on it, um, which I only fly in smart mode, or not smart mode, stability mode, uh, blue, blue mode. So that's the uh, that's my update tutorial. Uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and, and uh, write them in the comments down below. I get to them pretty damn quick. Uh, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and uh, go ahead and click subscribe over here. Is it down here? No idea. Uh, thank you, and we'll see you soon.